Hello and welcome at 3D Printing and Painting, everybody. I just got a package in the mail from Amazon. Special thanks to one of my Facebook friends and TiVo printers for hooking me up with this TiVo tarantula. Let's unbox it and see what we got inside. My room is really cluttered here, so I set up a portable table so I can do this filming. I obviously have no room. You can see I got prints everywhere and printers everywhere. So let's see what we got. There is no packing around the TiVo inside a larger Amazon box. And we've got footprints on it. Wow, look at that. Ain't that nice of them. Got a small dent in the box and got some footprints on it. Which sucks, but hopefully the printer's okay. I'm sure it's well packed. Get that box out of here. Yeah, I got a footprint there and one there it looks like. Everything appears to be okay. Build mat. Insulated heated bed. Roller screws, bearings, bolts. I'll get all this stuff organized and we'll start building it here in a minute. Let me get everything unpacked. Separate all the packs and orders so I grab the right one. Hot ends all assembled. Stepper motors. Should have two different sizes. Extruder. More build plates. And a carriage for the hot end. Frame rails for the base, top rail, nice pretty face, face plate, I love the color, appears to be possibly aluminum, as you can see in the box everything is well packed, belts, Power cord, spatula, which I won't use. I use build tack only. They're paper thin. They got a handle on them. They're kind of an L shape. They work great for getting underneath all prints. Some white PTFE, which I'll switch to Capricorn. It will stand much higher temperatures. Little TiVo business card. Got their web address on the back and phone number. Sample of PLA. That'd be good for a really small test print. Uh, the motherboard slash control box, which is all wrapped up very nice. Power supply which doesn't appear to have a fan in it whatsoever, but it's vented with holes very well. So that should be adequate, hopefully. The wires on the T60 connector look really tiny. But from what I've read online and heard from TiVo, for the short distance that they run, that they're supposed to be heavy enough, but personally by looking at them, I'd say no. But 
I'm sure if there's any kind of a problem, T was already said they would replace the wires for everybody that bought their printer free of charge. So we'll see what happens there. Let's see if it's got a power selector for the US. 110 or 220, which I don't see. So it must already be set correctly for my country. And here is the larger stepper. More T-nuts or hammer nuts. Hammer nuts and screws for mounting the LCD on the faceplate. The feet. Uh, extruder gear and bracket, some more T-nuts and bolts. And we frame rails. Some lead screw. And last but not least, LCD. and ribbon cable for it. What else do we have in here? Here's to be a needle for cleaning the nozzle. And somewhere here we should have a little mini tool kit. I guess I overlooked it. Oh, here it is here. An SD card, which I believe is supposed to have a PDF on it for installation. And then if it's not, which I'm pretty sure it is, I can go on the web and I can find an installation video. Step by step to make sure I get it right. I've got some zip ties here, Allen wrenches, and they're just small little wrenches that come with it to put it together. And if you don't wish to use these wrenches, you can use a 7 8 millimeter open-end wrench. Also, and nut drivers do the same. I prefer to use these wrenches, that way you don't over-tighten things. I tend to break things and I get them too tight, so using a small wrench would help stop that from happening. Give you a better feel for what's going on. And there's a little damage on the box here, uh, but it's in that bigger Amazon box, but nothing appears to be hurt inside. So that's Amazon, the package did that stepped on it, left feet prints on it. I don't you can see it there in the film. So let me get everything laid out, make some more room here, and we'll get to building.
Well, we're printing away. Everything went great on the build. I, the video wound it up being about two and a half hours long. And rather than try to do a voiceover and sit, have you sit through the whole thing and be bored and probably not watch the whole video, I figured I'll speed it up and play music. You can kind of get the basics on what's going on. There's a lot of other really good build videos out there where they explain step by step what to do and how to build the printer, plus a PDF file and other instructions you can find online or on groups. But here we are, I'm doing a skull in rainbow Arion PLA. It's coming out great. This has two layer fans on the printer, and I haven't turned down to 50% because they blow too much air. They're like a blow dryer, um, you know, cool of course, but they put out way too much air. So I recommend turning them down to 45 to 50% no more. You don't want to get a thermal runaway and have your hot end cool down too quick. So definitely in your slicer, um, turn down your fans. I have no salmon skin. I printed a benchy shark here. I'll post pictures after this video. I have no salmon skin, no layer lines. It looks almost perfect. And then in uh, Arion Marble, white, PLA, I printed this vase out. I, on the printer here, this is my first print that I did. I did not use uh, base mode in S3D. It's, they're too thin. It's like one millimeter layer thickness and it's just way too thin. It'll crush real easy. I believe this was 544 on my layers. You can hear that. That bottom is slightly thinner than the sides, but it's very thick. I could easily drop this on the floor. I'm sure it wouldn't break it, but I'm not going to find out. My wife likes it too much. But I figured I would kind of conclude this video. I didn't want to wait another day for this uh, skull to finish. Just coming out really good. It's got a volcano hot end, a Titan extruder. I took out the stock PTFE and I put some similar to Capricorn in there. This is made by CC Tree, then I have some from TH3D also that can withstand high temps. Um, because if the PTFE goes all the way to the nozzle and I don't want the white stock PTFE going down that far. It might get too hot. The tip will burn, I'll get clogged. So I just went ahead and replaced it right away. And in the build video, I forgot to have you guys see me sticking on this build map. It's basically a big sticker. And I started with one end, lined it up barely carefully, took my hand went back and forth as I laid it down to get it to stick. It works really good. I've had no issues yet with it. And let's see, the spool holder is off an Ender 3 that I had laying around. <laughs> I didn't print out the one that's on the file, and obviously I need one right away to work with. On the lead screw stepper motor, I did not have to use a spacer. Everything worked out fine. The gantry goes all the way top to bottom. It's lined up nice and straight, so I did not have to add any kind of spacers or washers to that to make that work. And I guess that's about it. I mean, it's a great little printer. It's got a full-size SD card in it. You know, for the price of $199 that's currently going for on AliExpress or Amazon, and I got free shipping on Prime, it's an awesome deal. Uh, compared to an Ender 3, do I prefer this over an Ender 3? Well, it's got a lot more upgrades than Ender 3. It's got a larger build, build volume. So I would say if you're juggling between an Ender 3 or this one, I would probably get to go with this one, the TiVo Tarantula Pro. It's Yeah, it's a nice little printer. This is only my third print, but I've had no issues whatsoever. I don't like leveling things manually. I've been printing for about two and a half years. Right now I have six printers, and then i got a spare Ender 3 in parts. And it gets time to be a pain, so I need to put an ABL of some sort on this auto bed leveling. So I don't have to, you know, adjust it here and there and check it and, you know, print might start and one of the wheels loosened up and I got to go fix it. And then it needs a, definitely needs a filament runout sensor. But for the price, I didn't, I didn't expect all these extra features. I'm really surprised for the price it's got the features that it does have now. But I don't want to run out of filament and have to try to figure out how to change it or add it without a filament runout sensor. On my other printers, when it runs out of filament, it pauses, goes, it locks the steppers, the head nozzle moves out of the way, I replace the filament, hit resume, it restarts the print and continues. And I can print for weeks like that. Uh, I think my longest print has been a little over seven days that I've done on one of my CR-10s. So I guess that's about it. If you guys stay tuned here, right after this video ends, I'll have pictures of all these prints on a close-up. And if you've stuck with me through the whole video and managed to get through this, I really appreciate it. I guess, and special thanks to Derek Brown, one of my Facebook friends, and TiVo Printers for making this possible. I really appreciate it. 
Um, as you can see, I'm not very professional in my videos, but I do my best. I don't. I try to put out content all that I can. I try to get more subscribers. I've got a lot more active on Twitter and uh, Instagram lately, trying to do more posts. And you can find me on Instagram or Twitter. You can leave me a message, or on my uh, Facebook group, 3D Printing and Painting, 3D HP. That's what this shirt says on the back of it. So I guess that's about it. So I'm going to call this a wrap. Thank you very much. And if you're watching this video, please like and subscribe. I'd like to get over a thousand subscribers. So thank you very much, everybody. Take care and have a good night.